So I'm back with this lure having glued the attachment loop and um, in case you were wondering what I was going to do with this uh, the lead filling hole uh, because there's no tension on that there's really no need to use uh, epoxy so I use a LePage's plastic wood and I fill, I'll fill that up but the LePage's plastic wood is a little bit porous so when you sand it uh, it leaves a few tiny little holes that show up later on in the painting process so I have a, a nether uh, Elmer's filler that I use it's much finer and I'll put a small layer on top of uh, the uh, plastic wood and then you get something that looks like this which is just absolutely perfect you cannot see that hole that that uh, lead hole is gone Here's a second hook just to prove my point. I, after a while I can't even tell where the holes are. So now this part of the video is going to be concern, uh, concerning rather the, uh, the tip here. And I want to put, do, give this guy a nose job. So the, the purpose of this is to stick epoxy down in this little end hole here and it will go also around here as well and then sand it off and here's what it looks like after so this is one lure not every lure is identical it depends on how you um, uh, sand this tip the, the beauty of custom lures is everyone's got its own personality everyone's a little tiny bit different I try to make them the same but you know what I get close so here's another lure that I made. This is a pink pink one. You can see it's a little bit wider. I mean, I've been doing this on a, a lot of lures. Here's another lure that I made and you can see this one has a more pointed nose on it. Now one of the one of the problems that you have to keep in mind is when, you, when you're pouring uh, the epoxy or you're painting the, the final epoxy coats over this, uh, the epoxy tends to uh, congregate on the nose. So you have to be aware of that. And during the, the drying of the epoxy, or the hardening rather, you, you tend to take your brush and you sweep that away so that doesn't happen. This one has a bit of a bulge, but it still works just fine. All right, let's get on to doing this. So I'm gonna bring in my, my mixing um, uh, cardboard and I'm going to put a little bit more than I would normally and the reason I do that is because more is better. Uh, the reason that is you want this nose to be one piece. You don't want to have to go back and add a little bit more because you're going to be grinding the nose off with a tool like this. Now this is a Milwaukee brand product. The battery powered it works great. Uh, I got this one given to me as a as a present from a friend of mine and it works absolutely fantastic. So more is better. To actually grind this off with that tool takes 15 to 20 seconds. So really it doesn't pay to go cheap on the five minute epoxy. Now if I'm putting this into the hole and around in a small mold and I find out I don't quite have enough, I mix some more right away. And that way the two batches can uh, mix and become one. So one of the things I do as well is I take the tip here and just to see what, what kind of um, hole I've got there I put this in and I, I measure it. I don't know if you can see that. That's actually quite a big hole so that's a good thing. So when you think of it you've got a plug of epoxy 
inside, surrounded by epoxy on the outside, and that, that tip should never crack or split. Uh, at least that's, that's the theory. So let, let's, let's do this while our epoxy is still nice and... I can't really show it very well. Pardon me while I, I put this straight up and down. So I've, you can see I put epoxy inside, filled it up as best I can, and then I put a, a piece of tape on it, kind of like so. Got to be, you got to have enough room there to add more. So this is going to form a mold. See, I've got that little mold. Now I'm going to put epoxy in the front of the lure, and it'll it'll connect with the other epoxy that I just put in. And it may creep around the edges, and uh, depending on how well the tape folds. But that's okay. As I said, more is better at this point. Now, as you're putting it in, you work it up the lure, knowing full well that 90% of this stuff will be ground off. But it makes a really, really nice nose. But I won't be able to grind this for probably two days now because as I mentioned in other videos this Gorilla 5-minute epoxy doesn't really get hard. It, 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 um, um, it firms up in five minutes that's for sure that's that's the name IE uh, but then it goes through a, a period where it is soft and then after about a day it's, it's um, not quite hard enough to sand because it'll it'll foul the sandpaper so it takes about two days for this to harden now after 10 minutes you can actually take the tape off and um, give you another look at that lighter background and really all you do is you hang it up by the uh, the front loop and it balances very nicely and you're pretty much done. It's relatively simple. Now, when you're grinding, that's, that's a little bit different. You've got to be careful. Um, you grind very slowly, very carefully, and uh, your object is to not make a sharp tip because that, that's you know going to get certainly blunted and of course the paint on top of it will blunt. So uh, again, it, it's to make a tip that more looks like this from the top and this from the side and bottom. I've been making these tips for three or four years and I, I've had one break but I found out that that one I had actually added a second bit of epoxy so it's a epoxy sticking to epoxy and the first epoxy had already hardened. Found out not a good idea so I won't be doing that again. Okay, so that uh, pretty much finishes off this video. We're going to come back and um, in two days, and we're going to start grinding this. It's, uh, it's going to be a bit tough to show because you've got to have your hands very, very close to your chest to control that, uh, that uh, sandpaper that's spinning so fast. Um, but we'll give you an idea what it looks like. And uh, then uh, after we do the, the rough grinding with, the, uh, with that tool, then I'll show you how to finish it off with, with hand sanding because it's really hand sanding that makes the difference. So last time we uh, talked about uh, the nose job that we'd given our hooks and here's one that's finished. See how horrible and ugly that is? But we're going to grind that down and I have one that's complete here. We also talked about pouring um, five minute epoxy uh, everywhere that the uh, stainless steel comes through. So there's this hole, there's this hole, and of course, and the, and the tail hole. Now, the tail hole is a little bit different. 
I like to make that tail, the uh, five minute epoxy, a little bit taller on there, just trying to give it a little bit more strength. And I, I usually don't sand that tail loop at all. So it, it, it usually turns out pretty nice without sanding. Here's a, here's a nether one. That's, that's my perfect. And what I might do is I might put that five minute epoxy on and depending how thick it is, if it wants to drip off, I may just spin it a little bit. And of course, five minute epoxy uh, will harden in five minutes. So after five minutes of spinning, um, this is probably my perfect tail loop. Kind of raised in the middle and uh, it's got lots of material there. And of course it dribbles all the way down here, maybe down here as far as this. So this is uh, that second lure that I started originally with the um, series of videos. And I wanted to show you what has happened now. So uh, this hole, remember this is, this is the, uh, uh, what it looked like with this filler. This is the filler that I, I like it's very, it, it, it's um, uh, solvent based and it dries extremely hard, but it is a little tiny bit porous. So as a cover coat to that, I use this Elmer's wood filler. This happens to be white. It comes in white and, and, and wood colored. Well, if you put the, the filler um, wood color on it, you can't see it. So white, helps me find out where I have the stuff and where I need to sand. So, if you notice right here, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, you can see the, uh, the plastic wood, the LePage's plastic wood in the background, and you can see little dots of white. That's where the um, Elmer's filled in some of the porous holes. All right, so now, as we, as we, as we look at the various loops, you can see um, white over top of the epoxy and uh, that's been sanded and um, filled with the, uh, the Elmer's. And then I use a variety of tools to finish off that hole. Um, one of them I use a hard paperback sandpaper. This is actually um, the, the sandpaper from belt sanders. And it's nice and stiff. You don't have to put a little block of wood behind it to make it straight. And I use this up to 120 grit. Uh, anything beyond 150, 220, 300. I use the standard uh, paper that you get from Home Depot. But for the, for the hard stuff like the 80 grit, this is just great because it's very stiff and you don't have to add that little piece of, of, of wood behind there. Well, you can see this guy, he, he's uh, been uh, sanded. Uh, I also use the razor knife to get in there and poke out material that I don't want. And also, I use these little files. These little files are great for getting in there. Uh, a variety of files. This little square file here is just amazing because it's nice and small, has a very fine tip and you can get in right in there. Now you gotta be careful with these files. They can they can make a lot of scratches, so go go carefully. So here's the the same style of hole. This is the belly loop now. Now you can probably see some dark spots um, like right here. And you might say, well, that's a hole. Well, no, that's actually the, the five minute epoxy poking through here and here. And again, I, I use this knife to get in there real close and I pick out all the excess stuff. I really like lures with a very, very nice loop. I, that, that is just something that I have always liked to do. It takes time. There's no doubt about that. Um, but that's, that's what I like to do. So now we're gonna look at the, a little bit closer at the nose. Okay, so here's that, that ugly nose that comes out of the, uh, the nose job using the tape around it. What I do is I use a product 
or a piece of equipment like this, it's called a, it's, it's, it's a Milwaukee, it's like a Dremel tool. A uh, Dremel tool would be just fine. But it's battery powered and um, it's got this little tube of uh, sandpaper on it. And I use that kind of like this. I won't show it to you here, but I'm very, very careful with it. And I do the, the face, which is very important. And I'll do along here and do along the sides. And then what I'll do is I'll use this, this sandpaper, this nice thick sandpaper in 120 grit, and I'll sand it even farther. Now, one of the things, of course, you're trying to do is get rid of as much filler as possible. Filler itself is not particularly strong. And so after you're done grinding it and sanding it, you'll put filler right, right necessarily here, right where the um, five minute epoxy hits the wood. There always seems to be a little bit of a, a ridge there. You sand it with the uh, 120 grit and it, 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 it's almost like you sand the wood more than the uh, five minute epoxy. So what you do is you put in a, a layer of filler and you come back and sand that and it just makes a beautiful job when you are doing a, a paint job. So this, this lure right here is ready for one of three coats of oil-based white paint. I use Trem Clad, because that's all I can get for an oil base. Um, Oil-based paint has some interesting characteristics. Of course, it's better than water-based for sticking. So one of the reasons I use the oil-based paint is um, in, in the next few videos you'll see me applying an aluminum tape to the lure like this. So what happens is sometimes I've, I've mentioned and you'll see in previous in the next videos that this tape you'll get on wrong and you'll have to take it off and if you have a water-based paint it'll just rip off that water-based paint like it uh, like there's no tomorrow. However, if you have the oil-based paint and you've let it dry for a minimum of two days, you can actually apply this and all of a sudden say there's a ding or a, a, a bump that, uh, and for whatever reason you have to take this off, you can do that without removing the paint. Sometimes you take it a little bit, a little tiny bit of paint, but it's not the wholesale ripping off the paint from the entire lure. So that's I, I use the trim cloud paint for two reasons. One, you have to cover the grain of the wood. Uh, I love it when people ask me when they pick up one of my lures, they say, oh, what, what's it made of? I said, pine. Oh, well, it doesn't even look like wood. Well, that's the whole idea. So uh, this, is be, this will be ready. One of the interesting things about your first coat of paint, <laughs> this happens every time. Uh, at this phase, everything's kind of matte. And what you do to, to help you find problems is you, um, you use different light sources to angle the light in to show you things that you need to sand. Now, you do the best you can. Now, you use whatever light you have. Uh, today, the sun was beaming into the grad, so I was, I was kind of putting the, uh, uh, the lure kind of sideways to the sun coming in. That works great. That is wonderful. Um, you might also have extra lighting, but no matter how much light you have, you can't get it all. And one of the interesting things that is on these lures, and I can certainly see it right now, is some little tiny scratches. So many, many years ago, my dad said to me, uh, paint is not a filler. And he was generally correct. However, uh, as you apply one, two, and three coats of this oil-based paint. Of course, the, the paint has um, a little bit of thickness. And what happens in the first coat, it, it's almost an experimental coat to see where you've missed. And you can actually take several large areas down because you missed things you just couldn't see. So the first coat, you know what, anything can happen. You could see a bunch of stuff. And you know, sometimes it's actually embarrassing because you thought, wow, I did a pretty good job. And then all of a sudden you paint and go, oh, yuck. So you have to sand those things off, maybe put more filler, and um, do the best you can to fix the holes that you see. And, uh, and, uh, uh. But what's happening now though is the paint is in fact sliding into those little tiny scratches. 
Okay, so you come along and you do the second coat. Well, the second coat, of course, is better than the first coat. Now, now it's starting to look not bad. But you know, there's always something. Always something. You would like the third coat to go on to the second coat without any filler or no sanding and stuff, but you know what, that never happens. So you'll have little areas that you'll have to sand and then you put your second coat on and, and one of the things that happens is this, uh, this wood filler, uh, when it gets its first coat, looks a little bit matte rather than the, the semi-gloss that the paint is. And if you're lucky, the third coat will make it look like you can't even see it. Now, you have to keep things in mind. Most of the side of this lure is going to be covered with that tape. That aluminum tape, that shiny aluminum tape. Little scratches won't show through that tape. Big scratches and big holes certainly will. Or if you have a, a goober that uh, landed on the paint while it was drying, yeah, that'll show through. So, in between coats, in between the first and second coat, I'll use 220. And in between the second and third coat, this is your last crack at it now, I'll use three to four hundred grit, uh, grit. So what, what I like to do is I like to have as many lures as possible ready for the painting. And the reason I do that is uh, painting, I use a um, high volume, low pressure painter with a, with a cup on top. And um, it takes a fair bit of cleaning. Uh, if, you, if you want this kind of equipment to last, and be ready for you the next time you want to use it, you got to clean it. So it seems silly to take one lure, paint it one coat, clean it. Two days later, come along, maybe give this one a second coat, give this one the first coat, and it's just a lot of a lot of cleaning. And of course, it, it uses um, thinner to um, um, clean the spray gun, so it's not. Not a, well, I don't think it's a good idea. I, I try to do as much as I can. I might have 10 or 12 hooks that I kind of save and then I'll paint them all at once. I wanted to point out one other thing here, just a little fact here that, remember when we were doing the lead and I covered up the, uh, the eyes with the tape? Notice how the lead does actually poke through. Um, neither of these uh, eyes will need that lead to be drilled out because it's actually uh, below the rest of the wood. Uh, this one has nothing at all in it, nor does this one. Not sure why. I think by the time the lead got there it was obviously cold enough. It hit the air and said, I'm done. So um, as, I, as I mentioned previously, this, this was a target weight of 400 grains, sorry, 400 grams, and turned out to be 407. I was trying to do the same thing for this one, but there are some possible errors, and this, this one is about 380 grains, so grams. So, um, not quite the same weight, and all the matter that is, is this, this the heavier lure will be a little bit lower in the water. And I'm talking a little, maybe a couple more feet. That's about it. Um, this thing, this, this design, because it has so much action, it actually forces the lure up off, off the, I wouldn't say the bottom, but up in the water column, um, just because of the drag. And um, some other lures that I have that, that don't have as much action, they go quite a bit deeper. So it doesn't make this the perfect lure, but it certainly makes it a very, very good lure. In fact, this is the best lure I've ever made. I love this lure. And of course, it comes in uh, uh, various sizes. And uh, some of my other videos are about the eight inch version, putting uh, uh, scales on it. So you can see this one is you know, roughly 400 grams. This one is about 250. This one is castable. And one of the things we're going to talk about a little bit later is why the smaller lures are something you should consider. And it's, it's about castability. I can cast the 6 inch, I can cast the 8 inch, but I can't cast this guy. So when, uh, when you're on one of these long uh, fishing trips, 
you'll have more time to cast stuff for Wah Wahoo than you will to troll stuff. So anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later, uh, closer when we uh, finish the paint.